speaking of new dawn, a new day, a new year, uh, we are videotaping all of these now, thanks to uh, Austin, AMS Media, right there, raise your hand, buddy. So if anybody needs a videographer or some help there, I know he would love to talk to you, and he's donating some of his time, at least, to do these uh, so, so, so you know about that in the future. If you miss one in real life, get uh, the video and let us know. But uh, so, so this year, new welcome. We're so grateful that you are here. And just a real quick uh, reminder about Work Life Connect, what it's all about. Especially for those of you that are new, here's our our mission statement for this specific facet of this uh, outreach. It's about bringing the extraordinary life of Christ to the lost, broken, in the workplace by helping followers and workers to love, live, and lead like Jesus with greater confidence, clarity, courage, and sense of purpose. And uh, who doesn't need that today, right? Uh, and and just, just so you know, uh, from time to time, well, I would say almost every month we have people in here, and I know some of you, and I just want to express my heart to you. I know some of you are in a place in life right now where you are broken, maybe feeling a little lost. <laughs> and a little stuck or struggling, and I'm so glad that you're here, because I feel and I hope that God encourages your heart through this time together. You can make some new connections that might help you in the place you're, you're stuck in. Uh, and so we're glad that you're here, and then all of us on some level are broken, right? And that's why I love Jesus, because he come to save us, redeem us from our brokenness, and to give us purpose of that and help other broken people. And we spend 60% or more of our waking hours in the workplace. Where better to do it? And why not link our, if those of you are, are church goers and, and people of faith on the weekends and you attend a church here locally, why not link it to your mission in your workplace? Uh, uh, such, a, such a privilege, such an awesome opportunity. Uh, so this is a ministry of outreach, inciting and outfitting a foundations church, which I'm privileged to be a part of. But this is really for the whole, whole community, and it's in partnership with, uh, so I attend there, I'm an elder there, I'm privileged to serve there, uh, but uh, I also, my, my normal day job, if you will, is uh, president of Kingdom Life Ministries, a strategic partner with foundations. And we do, just for those of you have brand new, some people have come here month after month and don't realize this, we have uh, uh, regional events monthly uh, uh, every second Thursday. It's the new year, everybody. Is it on your calendars yet? Every second Thursday, you got it? Uh, we want you here every week, every month, and invite people to come and just explode this to even greater impact. But we do uh, keynotes, we do training for companies, we do workshops, and we have coaching and uh, peer advisory group opportunities for business owners and CEOs as well. Uh, so we'd love to visit with you more about that, if any of those are interest to you. On the center of your table, there's a feedback opportunity. We'd love to hear from you about your experience today, something God spoke to you about, and uh, we'll go through some of the next steps. For those of you who are interested, there's no pressure whatsoever, but we realize that you might be in a place where you want some help, and we'd love to help you uh, even beyond this environment. So fill that out. If you need to leave early, especially leave it face down, we'll pick it up uh, later. And then also... Uh, we're really excited about this. So uh, if you're looking for a strict networking opportunity, this probably isn't it. Uh, but I tell you what, the connections people make in this environment is pretty profound. And it's a byproduct of our focus. Uh, so, but we want you to get to know other people and uh, we'll give some time at table discussions and do that around, those, around the table after and before, but on the back there's business cards. We want you to bring uh, a stack of them. So you can go through there and see someone that maybe a service you need. Uh, we want to feed business and opportunities to you and vice versa. So check those out, leave a business card. If you forgot some this time, bring some next time. Uh, and then today, before we get started, and I open in prayer in just a few minutes, I want to thank uh, our sponsor for today, Global Justice. So similar, you're gonna hear from her more next month. But right now, she's like to, we'd love for her to share a little bit about what she does. So, so just so you know, we, we, we basically barely break even on this environment. We're not trying to make a lot. We just want to cover our expenses at least. And so uh, those uh, the sponsors like Sosma help do that. Uh, and then the donations, thank you for those that gave $10, $15 or whatever. Uh, that helps us break even. So you want to tell us a little about Global Justice if, uh, for those who may not know about you? 
Thank you so much, Dan. As Dan mentioned, I'm Sosi Sammy Burnett, and I'm the founder and president of called Global Justice. And it is such an honor and a thrill to be a partner with King Way, because the heartbeat of King Way is a lot the heartbeat of, of global justice. Global, um, for those of you who are not familiar, is an international nonprofit organization. And we work to uh, really with this vision in mind to inform, impact, and inspire the generations to learn, lead, and do justice together. We are really a resource to the community, so we uh, serve as a support to local, national, and international communities in a wide variety of ways, covering topics like human trafficking, poverty, homelessness, and there's lots of different events, research, and other activities that we do. But we also work with a wide variety of sectors, so arts, advocacy, church, business, education. And because I'm in a business community today, I want to reinforce the fact that we're especially excited to work with the business community, and for two main reasons. One, business people, most business people, don't just sell goods and services. They want to sell goods and services to help people, to make a difference in the community. Secondly, business people can have a more efficient and effective response to injustices in the world. You can be much faster in addressing issues and much more thorough than, let's say, the government, etc. Right? So next month, I am really excited to be here to be talking about biblical justice in the marketplace and how you can do good and still do good for your business. Right? So we're looking forward to sharing that. Finally, I also want to share with you that locally here we have a place called Microplace, which is our, our home. And it's a great place for us to be able to do our work. But it's also a place for the community to come and do events. King Way has done a few events at uh, Microplace. We're just thrilled to partner in that way. But we also have something called the Global Market. So next month, if you come to this event, um, we'll be able to share a sample of that and learn more about how that helps empower economic development around the world. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Kim Nguyen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I encourage you to talk with about the magnificent work we're doing and the, uh, the little shops you can bring next week. You're going to be amazed if you haven't seen it in their place yet. Uh, so we're, we're excited to partner with Global Justice as well. I've uh, been doing that last uh, several months more and looking forward to even more in the future. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring a lunch like this for just 300 bucks and, and share a little bit about your business, let us know. You can place the feedback form for that. Uh, so speaking of the new year, I want to share and start us off with a, a scripture verse that I just love. It's from Isaiah 42, 9. It says, see the former things have taken place. One of the things I love about a new year, it's kind of a reset. Just putting, putting off all, maybe some of the, the terrible challenging things uh, of the past, but then also celebrating the great things. And uh, so it says here, the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring into being, I announce them to you. I believe that God has some amazing new things for every person in this room, right where he's placed us. And, and I hope maybe even today that, that he whispers to your heart about what some of those new things are. Uh, and then you'll, you'll have a posture and readiness that says yes. Uh, so, uh, before I am going to pray, but uh, I want to give you a chance just to connect briefly with those around the table. Get to uh, try not to, if you're introduced, what you do, keep that really brief, you know, on damn Kingway Ministries or whatever, and then just share a couple thoughts to, to uh, these questions. What does that verse stir in you? And I'll go back to it in a second. And uh, what's an example of an old thing you want to shed or a new thing that you want to embrace for 2023? All right, so what does that verse stir in you? And something old you want to shed or something new you want to embrace? So here's that verse again. Uh, so go ahead and talk about that around your table for a few minutes. So I want to ask you, what would it take for you to experience the extraordinary power of God in a marketplace this year? We'll see. But they, most of you probably are here because you, you want that. You long for it. Some of you may not know exactly how to achieve it. Uh, some of you might struggle with fears that are holding you back from stepping fully into that. Uh, some of you might be just a little stuck, or you know, some of you uh, might be just a little stubborn. We all get that way every once in a while, right? Uh, but what I want to share with you today is, is just one simple way of many that you can experience 
the extraordinary work of God in your, in your marketplace, your ministry this year. And it's simply the word yes. The year of make this year the year of yes. So how many of you uh, remember two months ago, Jimmy Page here, uh, talking about the one word that will change your life? Some of, most of you are here, right? Okay, so just real quick, how many of you came up with one word for the year? All right, shout, shout out some of them. Resilience? Yes? <laughs> you stole mine. What else? Favor. Say again? Favor. Favor, I like it. What else? Okay. Simplify. Ooh, I like that one. Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Aware. Aware. Renew. Breakthrough. Renew. Breakthrough. Awesome. Awesome. So those are a lot more sexy than uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. But, uh, uh, you know, and so so Jimmy's word for this year, by the way, I said, I'm going to share it. He told me it was execute. I said, dude, you got to give him another great one. So he had rattled last year. I said, I wanted that one. But I came up with yes. And I just wanted to, before we dive into this, I just want to share a little background of how I came up with that uh, one word. And so I want you to think about just one thing of last year, 2022. You don't have to share with anybody, but I want you to cognitively think of one thing that you just like, wow, I can't believe that happened last year. In a positive way, not, not one of the, wow, I can't believe that happened last year. So you got one? Okay, so now everybody just do this with me. You see the kid in the background, it's kind of hard to see, but he's doing a fist pump. So everybody just do this with me real quick. Yes! Yes! Wow, that was weak. Try again. Ready? One, two, three, yes! So... So that's one of the reasons I have the word yes for this year, just because I'm just so grateful. My word for last year was 100x. I'm just blown away by the multiplication, which the, was the, 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 the brainchild, I guess, behind that. Uh, and so that's one of the things, like, man, I'm just saying yes. Thank you, Lord. And uh, we don't do that enough. Just do a fist pump to stop to celebrate some of our wins. Some of the people I'm coaching, it's just like, uh, maybe they work with executive leaders and man, I just wish my partner would back off the pedal a little bit. Just we're just exhausted and running our teams into the ground. And and I get that. I'm kind of wired that way too. And sometimes we just need to pause and say, Yes, thank you, Lord. Uh, some other factors that contribute to this, I want to say is just kind of a backdrop leading into some things I'd like to share today around the year of yes. Is uh, I was reading this book. How many of you read read the book uh, Love Does by Bob Paul? Okay, several of you. So he's this crazy older guy, ex-lawyer, he still practices law, I said, uh, on some level. And there's one chapter in there, the whole book is just hilarious about all these extraordinary things he experienced simply because he said yes. In one chapter he talks about, he, he just decided to say yes to everything. Like he puts his cell phone in his book and people from out of the blue call him and he talks to him. Just crazy stuff like that. And so I was reading through that with the group I'm involved with in Denver. And then I was reading some scriptures like this. Although the Lord, Isaiah 30, verse 20, 21, gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. Your eyes will see them. How many of you faced some adversity last year? How many uh, see some on the horizon of this year? You're in it already. It's going to come, my friends. Sooner or later, we go through seasons. But here is the amazing promise of God for those who have a, a predisposition to want to hear from him. Uh, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. The Holy Spirit of God, through his word, through connections around in this room, through uh, the promptings of the Spirit, is wants to guide you, even through times of adversity, very clearly. He wants to lead you more than oftentimes we want to be led. Are you willing to say yes? Are you willing to seek? Here's another verse that precipitated my word. Yes, Lord. Whoops. Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws. I would, I would ask this personal line. Yes, Lord, I want to walk in the way of your laws. I wait for you. Your name, your renown is the desire of my heart. I want to make you more famous. 
I want to draw attention to the, the, the magnificent splendor, the glory, the awe, the power, the wisdom, the might, the clarity, the confidence, and courage you want to give everybody. Uh, so yes, Lord, walk in your ways. And then Psalm 25, 14 says this, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. How many of you would buy an app that said Insider Edition to God? <laughs> How much money would you have paid for that app to get a direct message from God on your phone every day? You pay a lot of money for that. I would. But you know what? God, God, God has a free app for us. It is Word and all these things we're going to talk about today. He wants to speak to you so clearly. And but here's the thing that I want to challenge you is that uh, I I believe wholeheartedly in grace. I'm thankful for it. But Jesus, we just celebrated celebrate Christmas with the embodiment of what? Grace and love, truth too, right? Grace and truth. So here's the thing, my friends. God is gracious. He forgives. He redeems. He, he, he never stopped loving you more or less depending on what you're doing or not doing every single day. But here's the thing. Uh, if you really want to become more in tune to what God is saying to you, godliness matters. Think of Abraham. Abraham, way back in the Old Testament, says that he was a righteous man. Uh, and because he was godly and righteous, you remember that scene? Maybe, and I'll tell the story if you're not familiar with it. Uh, God is thinking about how he's going to deal with Sodom and Gomorrah and all the, the upheaval that was going on in that city. And uh, there's three people that appear. One of them is, is Jesus incarnate and is talking to Abraham as a friend face to face. And they say, should we let Abraham know in on the inside edition of what we're going to do? They decided, yes. Why? Because Abraham is a righteous man. And there, there is a direct link, link to be able to hear more from God. First, you've got to respond to what he's talking to you and telling you today. If you're not, why would he reveal more to you? And then secondly, is saying yes, and, and not that we have to be perfect, but we're growing in godliness. Uh, so those verses and just different circumstances and things in my life uh, pointed to that word, and so I'm really, really excited about it. I'm a little, a little scared about it, too, actually. Because uh, some, some things I'm feeling that God's calling me to and our ministry to is is uh, pretty uh, intimidating and feels very risky. But it's also adventurous. <laughs> and that's exciting. So here's four things. You know, I've been criticized before as a Dan, man, on your website, you got all these things you say you're going to cover in an event. I, I don't think you covered one of those. <laughs> It's like, okay, so I don't want to be guilty of that, so we're, I'm using what's on the website as our outline for that. These are the things we're going to talk about. The extraordinary power of yes and what that looks like. The greatest secret of experiencing God in the marketplace. The best gift you can give those who lead, you lead in 2023. And how to live with a sense of adventure every day. All right, does that sound pretty exciting? Are you ready? Yeah. Yes! All right, all right. All right, what, so first we're going to look at what, what the extraordinary power of yes looks like. It looks like this, among other things. But these are a few that I wanted to point out. One is just start with saying yes right where you're at. In your personal life, in your home life, uh, in particular, what is it that God is calling you to do that you have not yet done? Or to be that you have not yet arrived to? And I forgot to pray, so let's do that right now. Father, we just want to come before you. I just so long preaching this in this room, Lord, to have the, our yes meter paid towards the, the far right of a, a posture and disposition that seeks after you and wants to hear from you, Lord. So I pray right now. We thank you for the food. We thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for my for my wife and who, who did all these table decorations and. Um, uh, Elisa, Greg, and the team, Lord, just put these things together. We're so grateful. We, we just ask we hear from you today. But this wouldn't just be another lunch, and this would be truly holy ground that we've met more deeply with you. And uh, perhaps even have heard specific things you want to speak to each heart. 
So I ask this, Lord, in your son's precious name. Amen. So uh, it starts with saying yes. Actually, let me go back. I'm going to keep this slide there. So um, I want to illustrate the extraordinary power of God in a marketplace setting. From Acts chapter 10, and I'm asking you to bear with me because I'm just going to read through a few verses, explain a few things, and I'm going to keep coming back to this the background in our time together. God's word is so powerful, and this just left off the page and into my heart when I was reading a couple months ago. Uh, it's in Acts chapter 10, and the background is that God was stirring something new, really new, scandalous type of thing. In our last few years, We've heard a lot about the scene. It's been a constant piece, a thread running through the, our nation's history as long as I've been alive, racial tensions. And we think racial tensions are bad today. In Jesus' day, at the beginning of the early church, they were significantly greater than what we are experiencing today. And where one of those places where it reared its ugly head is the relationship between the the Jewish people, nation of Israel in the Old Testament, and Gentiles, anybody that's not Jewish. Significant racial tensions. Uh, where so, so significantly, like remember the story of Jesus and the, the woman at the well, oftentimes people, Jewish people would travel around Samaria not to go through uh, and you know connect with those people. So God is stirring something new, and beginning verse 1, just listen to these verses, hear the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. That's your attention meter right there. <laughs> hear the word of the Lord. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. Did you hear that? That relates to point number one. Come back to that. Uh, he gave generously to those who were in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God and came to him and said, Cornelius? Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts of the poor have come upon me as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter, he is staying with Simon the tanner who has a house by the sea. And when the angel spoke to him, he had gone. Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Meanwhile, the next day, so that's a, get this, not just a Gentile person, but a Roman soldier who many of the Jews absolutely was and then, verse 9, the next day, transition the scene to Peter. He's, he's praying on the rooftop. He becomes hungry, wants something to eat. God appears to him in a vision and gives him a really weird vision. The sheep descending in the sky with a bunch of unclean animals in it. And he says to Peter, rise up and eat. He said, no way, Lord, because for the Jewish people to eat something like a pig was like unclean and totally uh, something they would reject. What was God doing through this? He was stirring something new. He was trying to speak to Peter through a vision of a more spiritual reality of something he was going to do different. He was, he was not only going to want to change and have a relationship with the Jewish people, but the entire known world. He wanted Peter to be the apostle and the person to bring about that change. So keep that in mind. So the rest of the story goes, and we're going to come back to this just bits and pieces, but the rest of the story goes... Uh, these three men for this sort of Cornelius sends, uh, Peter goes back with them. Cornelius has a whole household gathering of all his family, friends, work associates, and uh, many of them receive Christ and the power of God and the Holy Spirit fall upon them. A huge change for both individuals and everyone surrounding them. So going back, how do we experience the extraordinary power of God? It starts with yes in our own places. Did you notice how Cornelius was a devout, righteous man? He was seeking the Lord. He was praying. He was trying to be a steward of what God gave him, including his money. Get this, my, my friends. So God is on his throne looking throughout the earth like, who am I going to trust 
with this new thing that I'm going to do. <coughs> I'm going to talk to Cornelius. He's seeking me. He wants to hear me. He's trying to do the right things. You and I can be those people. And then, and then the Apostle Peter, and we know, hopefully you know some of his story. He was one of the one of the most probably rough-edged disciples of all time, and then he became this powerhouse voice uh, for God and a leader. But it starts with saying yes in our home. So, so what does that look like for you? Is it spend more time with your kids? Grandkids? Is it spend time in the Word? Is it is it to uh, forgive your spouse, a family member? Is it is it to stop trash talking to your husband or wife in public? You know, what is it? That God wants us to move, become more righteous, more devout in our own places where he's planted us in our home first. Get this, so, so Psalm 101, it's a powerful psalm. David starts praying, he says, he says, uh, Lord, let me live a blameless and righteous life in my own household. And then he goes through and he describes how he's going to do that. Why was God, why was David a man after God's own heart? Is that because he was seeking him. He wanted to be righteous and blameless in his own home. Uh, so it starts in your own place. And then here, I'm going to skip to number three for a second. The best gift you can give to those who lead. The best gift you can give those you lead, whether it's in your home, in your workplace, is the gift of righteousness. Our culture is crazy righteous people. If you want to have influence, influence be right, more righteous. People will not be able to stand you, I would say that, maybe, but stand to stay away from you. They'll be seeking you out. Uh, it continues with saying yes in your vocation. We saw this in the story of uh, Cornelius. Isn't it amazing what happened there? Despite the mystery and the non-business way that God revealed himself. You know, we, we talk a lot about business strategies, matrix, uh, you know, assessments, and, you know, a lot of you, I know you use EOS. All those things are great tools, right? Uh, but, but sometimes we miss the mystery of how God and his kingdom works. Track this story with me again. I mean, Cornelius gets, gets a vision and gets spoken to by God from an angel. And one of the things he asks him to do is to go on a mission from God, uh, asking his attendants and a soldier to be a part of that. There's a lot of mystery there. And there's, there's a, a lack of clarity. It's, it, you know, it's a bizarre place, a bizarre challenge. Wait a second, God, I can think uh, Cornelius saying to himself, you want me to send who? My servant, my soldier, on a mission from God? <laughs> you want me to go where? Joppa, 30 miles by foot. That's a little bit of a trek. And they're getting, so they're on company time. To do ministry work. Really? There's some companies doing that around this, this, this area. The older family companies, they're just amazing. They have they paid people to, to meet and figure out how to care for people and minister to people in the organization and several others that I could mention. Uh, you want me to do what exactly? Tell Peter what? Come back with me? Are you crazy? And he just does it. And then Peter, conversely, you think about, uh, you want me to eat what? <laughs> and you, you want me to mix with Gentiles? Where do you want me to go? Italy? Are you? That sounds kind of nice, actually. <laughs> That's on my bucket list. Maybe not for 2023, but I'd like to go to Italy. So maybe that wasn't such a bad deal. Uh, but you, you want me to go to the compound of a Roman soldier that's a Gentile. Is that right? It's a lot of mystery, a lot of risk, a lot of unknowns, but they say, they say yes, right in the marketplace for Cornelius. 
You know, I wonder how many things we're missing in the marketplace. Miracles, extraordinary work of God, right where God's place is in the marketplace because we're not willing to hear and embrace sometimes the mysterious calls of God in our workplaces. But that's a kingdom principle. Sometimes the most significant thing you to do, lead your organization forward to say yes to a mysterious call of God when it doesn't make business sense. Now, I know, I know there's wisdom to be practiced, there's counsel to be gained from others, uh, to not be too crazy, but, but are we risking it up? There's some examples I want to share. Uh, James Reuter is a friend of mine. Some of you remember we did a rooftop event uh, several years ago. Uh, but he shared with us uh, how he was broken by God when he went to Peru and saw the needs of orphans there. And he remembered as he left seeing a young or orphan in Peru just look at him and said, don't go. And he just broke into tears. At the same time, his business is struggling, losing money, not knowing he's going to make it. God brought him to a place of brokenness through orphans in Peru to get his heart to a place of surrender. He said, okay, yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you ask. I'm no longer an owner of this company. You are. I'm just the steward. I'm the manager. God asks him to hire refugees in the Denver metro area. <coughs> you want me to do what with who? He says yes. <laughs> Revolutionized, turned around his company. Just unbelievable success. And you know what? He just sold it, unfortunately, in some ways, but fortunately in others. But. Uh, for 10 years, he was the steward of God's company, and you go into his workplace, and all over the front door, there's glass words, and it says, in the 13 languages represented by the refugees he hired, something about God, Jehovah, in their language, and prayer boards, and had uh, Easter or Good Friday services where he invited his pastors to come in and share the gospel, did worship for about 30, 45 minutes, totally voluntarily. And I just heard him yesterday at a breakfast mention this again. I didn't know a couple of the pieces. I knew one of them. And he said, you know, that felt so risky, so mysterious. You want me to do what? They had some, several people accept Christ and they baptized him right in the the Eleanor Pallet Young Lumber Yard, producing 10,000 pallets a day and having a baptism service. Is that incredible? And he said, that felt so risky and so wrong, but you know what? Two of those people accepted Christ in those two days died tragically right after the same weekend. One in a car accident and one in a drive-by shooting. Do you think he ever regretted and said yes to God? Wow. Think of a young guy, some of you know him, Stephen Wygant. He, uh, he's a prospective wealth advisor. He came over our events a few years ago. He said, Dan, it just, just rocked me because I never thought about Monday being my ministry and that I could have a ministry in my workplace. And he starts praying in his company meetings and, and uh, has as an atheist came to one of our events and started having a Bible study with his wife who works in the company as well. Bringing his company, their company, all of his employees to one of our events and two of them are atheists and they love it. It's like, we're, we're missing the boat. Some of us. And, and Pete, Pete's a really good friend and uh, he gave me permission to share the story. Raise your hands, please, Pete, if they don't know. You need to know this guy. Uh, I'm a little disappointed he sold his business, too. <laughs> but when I met him seven, eight years ago, 
he came to that same place of surrender and realizing God owned his company. And he gave it to God. And they decided to be a, a business in the business of developing people, and they happened to clean buildings on the side. And he's accomplished so much and ministered so many people through his organization and said yes to God right in his vocation. I hope of nothing else you get out of today is that you, you find something to say yes to. God's calling you to be a little bit more courageous, a little more bold. And the extraordinary work of God continues and furthers by just saying yes to new revelation, whatever and wherever that is. Get a little too serious. So, you're all on a mission from God. How many of you ever seen this movie years ago? It's a long time ago now. Blues Brothers, like, we're on a mission from God. That's really true. I'm the old. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> Uh, so I'm going to come back to the discussion if we have time. for some. So the greatest secret to experience God in the marketplace really is uh, to say yes. And, and here's another principle link is that God called the secular leader in a secular workplace to share a sacred message. Cornelius okay. said yes. God used it remarkably. And he wants to use you and he wants to use me as well. Uh, so, so get this. I want to go back to the story now. It's like uh, Peter, verse 21, he has three dudes show up at his doorstep and uh, says, why have you come? The mystery is still there. And then the next, uh, he, he finds himself in the group of all these people that were invited by Cornelius and he still doesn't know exactly what he's supposed to do. He says, may I ask you why you sent me? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They don't know the answers. They're just following next steps and next steps. And, and I just want to say, I think that's the way God works. Some, sometimes we talk about vision. We need to have all the things planned out. Let's bring out your 10-year vision. Like, I have no clue about my 10-year vision. I have some aspirations maybe, but, but, you know, I think that's the way that God works more. He gives us a few steps ahead. Are you going to obey me in this? And then when you get there, he opens up. It's like stepping through a portal to a new dimension where you realize what's next. And it's just a response after response after response. Uh, but I just want to say this too, that it's not without clarity. And we talk about one of our missions here is to help you develop greater clarity. I got a friend in this room that said last year, uh, one of the best gifts he received was clarity. That is a gift. God doesn't want you to be without clarity. Did you notice in the story that, that God gives us enough? He said, go, go to Joppa. Uh, and I'm, I'm sending three guys. They're coming at your doorstep right now, Peter. Go down and meet them. That's pretty clear, isn't it? <laughs> and I want you to go back to Joppa with them. And he does it. So it's not without any guidance. That's encouraging, isn't it? It gives you what's next. So uh, a few few principles here. How do you experience the extraordinary? Uh, one is simply believe. Believe. God, so if you didn't notice, today's a little more inspirational. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do something like this uh, for the new year, but I hope I want to break to a little more practical aspect now for some next steps for for all of us in the room, and hopefully God will speak to you as you're listening in some way. So God's desire to repeat such divinely led, worldly changing events every single day, over and over and over again. John chapter 5, Jesus said, uh, I do nothing apart from the Father. Every single day, he was spent time with God so he'd receive his fresh marching orders. So he could have clarity for that day, the next day, and for who to spend time with and not. Have you ever seen The Chosen? It's, it's so powerful in how they depict some of the individual interactions, and it's so clear that God, the Father, had divine individual appointments for the Son every single day. And he was clued into what those were and made time for those. He has the same thing in store in mind for us. Are we believing, though? Are we looking for those things? And uh, everyone has a role to play. Cornelius and Peter, they were leaders. Marketplace, ministry, politics. Some of you are that. Some of you are not. 
But did you notice other people in the story? Simon the Tanner, small business leader down by the sea. He had a role. Makes, makes significant contributions to the change that took place, the new that God was bringing. Did you notice the attendant, a servant in a household? Did you notice the soldier? Huge things that Cornelius and God were trusting those individuals with. And then family and friends. Matthew 7 says, ask, seek, knock, so you shall find the door will be open to you. And so we understand more of the grandeur. Are we asking? Are we seeking? So let me ask you this. What is it that you want to believe God for? What is it that you want to ask God for in 2023 and have faith for? What is that one thing? If you get nothing else from today, grab that one thing. Like the one word. <laughs> so believe. Secondly, become more righteous. Did you, did you ever notice this powerful scripture in 2 Timothy? It says, with godliness and contentment, there is great gain. There's such great gain and contentment that comes with godliness. So what is one thing God wants you to become more righteous in? In your interactions with someone at home, in the workplace, with uh, letting your yes be yes. I'm dumbfounded today at how many people say they're going to do this and do that and do the other thing, and it's, it's, they don't do it. A simple doing what you say you're going to do makes a huge difference. Doing your work with excellence uh, for the service of other people instead of selfish gain, that's God. Whatever it is that God might be laying in your heart is become, become more righteous, become more obedient. Say yes to whatever he asks. I want to go back to the question and become, become more righteous. Here's a question, so a coaching question for you to think about. The first one is, what do you want to believe God for in 2023? What do you want to pay for? The second is, where might you be out of integrity? Something you're saying that you're not doing, that you believe in your heart, but does it come through your actions or your words? That's a convicting but kind of cool question. It can serve us some great things. Where are you on a table? The answer to that might be your one thing to become more righteous. Uh, be more obedient. So where, where is God asking you to say yes? Surrender, by the way, is required. <laughs> but, it's, but it's adventurous. All these things are adventurous, my friends. If you surrender, it'll be amazing. Uh, be bold. I want to play a video for you. How many of you have heard of, uh, I'm sure you have, but how much is inundated the news lately? How many of you have heard of uh, the Mar Hamlin issues? Right? Yeah, probably almost everyone in this room, right? Safety for the bills. Uh, and he's out of the hospital now. But I want to show you something that's bold that I hope will inspire you. And I'm sure you've seen this is just one of many stories that come out of this adversity. Remember we started that verse earlier? Adversity. So, so oh man, I hope this works the sound. Uh, listen to this. ESPN Live NFL. Um, football gave me everything. You know, and I think even through the midst of absolute tragedy last night, I think you saw some of the beauty of football mm -hmm. as well, that it's brought us all here together. Um, you know, like, this is a little bit different. I heard, I've heard it all day, like thoughts and prayers. And you just heard Scherf and Jonathan Allen say, like, all we can do is pray for him. And I've heard the Buffalo Bills organization say that like, we believe in prayer. And maybe this is not the right thing to do, but I want. It's just on my heart that I want to pray for. It is. Demar Hamlin, right, right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that your God and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. We're, we're sad, we're angry, um, and we want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray, truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar, to be with his family, to give them peace. 
If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. Um, I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up Damar Hamlin's name in your name. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. Respectfully. Isn't that incredible? Have you seen that? But is that the same network that didn't want Tim Tebow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. No, probably. Uh, when I saw that, I just started bawling. And I just like, yes, yes, yes. It's like, finally, someone's got enough guts to be bold and proclaim the name of Jesus on national television. And when I heard that, I said, oh, God, please heal this guy. <laughs> so that guy's prayer is answered. And, and it happened. And it's happening. And, and so some of you were part of our event to Henry Richard Black, be his dad, Henry Black. He says, some, so the reason why we're not experiencing the extraordinary work of God is that we're not believing in God for extraordinary things. And so one of my prayers, I pray for this for you guys, like, Lord, help, help the people in this room to see miraculous movements of God and answers to prayer in their workplace. Let them be an impetus for that. I just think about, man, what if, what if we were just a little bit like that bold wherever God's place is, what God would do in our community? It's just exciting to think about. i got to go back to this here real quick. So, <laughs> I'll wrap up with a couple stories and then uh, close and then bring some action steps. And I apologize. I knew I, I always get too long winded, so I'm sorry you didn't get a chance to talk around the table again. So, hopefully, be able to talk before we go. But I just want to share what is a way you can be more bold? Turn Sunday's inspiration to Monday's perspiration and showing God who and what He's like to make His glory and His renown majestic. Maybe it's, for those of your business owners, your mission, vision, values, and purpose, make them forth, faith forward, outright. Maybe it's uh, a little more overt. Regardless, we must be causing people to ask questions about who God is through how we do our business, through what we say, what we're doing. Some of you aren't business owners, but it, it could be doing a work of excellence, just taking time to talk about God in natural ways, like you talk about a Netflix movie. How many of us do that? Talk about God, bring him into conversation. Uh, you know, praying for people, uh, one of the things I started doing uh, about a year and a half or so ago is at restaurants, I would ask the server before uh, we prayed, it's like, you know, we're gonna pray for our meal here uh, in a couple minutes. Is there anything we can pray for you about? Nice. Nice. Been doing that for some time and it's interesting. Uh, I've never had anybody be really offended. The worst I've gotten a couple times is, like, no, I'm good. Okay, no problem. We pray for a minute. <laughs> uh, so I've got to tell you three stories. Just, just something simple like this that can put the extraordinary of God in something ordinary for you. So one time, uh, we're at the graphs, just a, just a week or two with the, with the person I was meeting with and asked the question. She ran off and I thought, oh, I finally freaked somebody out. <laughs> finally took somebody off. I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to assimilate this as my blessing. You told me to do that. So I'm assimilating this as my blessing because I'm being persecuted. She comes back and she said, I'm so sorry. And she has tears in her eyes. And she said, that's such an amazing question. I'm so humble that I just, I couldn't keep my composure. And I had to leave for a second. My wife and I and daughter were at BJ's one time. We asked the server, I think we can pray for you about when we pray for a meal. And she started tearing up. She said, yeah. My, she said she was a younger gal, let's say maybe early 30s. And my sister just died in a tragic car accident two weeks ago. And I'm taking care of a six-year-old and an eight-year-old on my own right now. All of a sudden, I just feel like you're on sacred ground. It's like, this is the stuff that life really consists of, Lord. This is what really matters. 
couple weeks ago, I was in Longmont at the Roost. You ever been there? It's a cool place. Yeah, I've been, been there. It's got some good food, kind of a cool place. Asked a question. The really rough looking guy, probably early 20s. I thought, I don't know if this one's going to go. <laughs> God taught me again not to judge by appearances. And the first thing he said, Yeah, oh man, that's so cool. I'm so glad you asked because, man, my back is really hurting right now because. Uh, see that gal behind the bar there? I said, yeah. Well, she jumped on me, and we were wrestling behind the bar before we were open today. I was like, I want to work in this place. <laughs> and so it was just like something that was like, yeah, okay, we'll pray for you. Man. God, it's just so fun. And turn this ordinary to extraordinary. And we can have moments like that every single day in the marketplace. So, so what are your next steps? What's God calling you to do? Uh, just say yes. Let this be the year of yes for you. And just see what he does. Would that be cool? And, and, and I'd love to hear some of your story. Really would. Uh, and I won't embarrass you in front of people with that story without permission. <laughs> Let's pray. And then I'm going to go through some next steps. Lord, thank you so much for our time together. Well, it's so cool that right in the middle of our work day, right in the public place, that we can come and just be so open about this. I just want to thank you for that. Thank you for every person in this room, Lord. And I just pray for your favor. pray for your wisdom. I pray for your Holy Spirit to be real and alive to them. I pray for clarity. I pray for courage. And uh, I pray for greater levels of belief. A little more righteousness. I thank you for forgiving us for the ways we flub up every day. A little more obedience and a little more boldness, Lord. Because we want to be your ambassadors to bring about the new that you have for this year. So we commit ourselves anew to that, Lord. And we thank you for what you're going to do. We love you in Jesus' name.